Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for the Craft Stash Halloween and Autumn blog hop. Now today we are going to be looking at my textures in the Stars collection. Now everything that I'm showing you here and working with, you are going to be able to use that Craft Stash Halloween and Autumn link. I've got that down in the description and that is going to get you 20% off of these items. It's also going to allow you to get 20% off of anything that any of the other crafters on this blog hop are using. So the best way to find these is to go through my link in the description and look at the page that has all of the products in so you can browse everything. Make sure you hop through each of the videos as well. Give everyone a like, a comment, subscribe to their channel if you haven't done already and um, make sure you subscribe to Craft Stash. There might be a little bit of a surprise for somebody who has subscribed from this blog hop you'll see okay so uh, I'm going to be making a book so it's going to be like an old vintage book there's actually a card so it's not going to be too deep I'm going to be focusing on these fantastic sort of constellations um, stamps and these are a bit like tarot cards here and building it up now I'm going to work on both the front cover and the inside so there's going to be a lot to this project so hopefully you can uh, stay with me while I work through this so the first thing I need to do with this gorgeous sort of maroon mahogany color um, cardstock is create my base with a bit of depth because these are going to be on the front of the book so I think my yes yeah, so about five if I do this at four and a half inches wide actually I might go a little bit further because yes I would like to do something on the inside so I'm going to go five inches there you go so there's my scoring blade on my trimmer then I'm just going to come out by half an inch so it's not too deep score again and then I'm going to cut this at five inches as well so with the height, I'm going to place my stamp in the centre there and just gauge the uh, length. Pull my trimmer out. Let's see what length we've got there. We're looking at just over six inches there. Now my Sizzix scoreboard and trimmer comes with this handy little um, punch and this is just going to round off my corners. So I've just done the two corners on the outside away from the spine on each, both the front and the back. So now I need to build inside um, just an area to raise up because I'm going to put a slightly raised panel. You'll see what that looks like when we start putting it together. But I just need some tabs. So these are going to be two that are the length, just inside the length of the card and two that are the width. Now, again, I'm going to use my stamps as a guide here. So if I take a ruler and measure because it will be this stamp, I'm going to measure so that is nine and a half centimeters by uh, 14 centimeters almost exactly so I need two strips at 14 centimeters two strips at nine and a half centimeters each of these needs to fold in half and I'm going to make them about uh, a centimeter deep now although I'm not going to be gluing these in just yet because I've got some stamping and such to do I'm just going to show you where these are going to work so they're going to fold uh, in half each of them so I've got the two long strips which were 14 centimeters for the sides and then I've got two shorter ones for the top and bottom again everything's folding in half the bottom strip will sit on the um, on the base of the card in there and the top will sit like so okay so just like that so I've now started to build up. Now that will all all that what those workings will be covered over. So I haven't got to worry about that. And I'm going to be using this stamp set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this uh, twice. And this is going to be onto sort of a vintage paper. Um, if I can't find a vintage style pattern paper already, I'll probably make my own with a little bit of distress oxide or distress ink. And this is going to be stamped, uh, I think, black onto white for this one. There we go, perfect. Now that is going to cut out exactly, and that is going to go inside the card base. But I'm going to re-stamp this again. Now this time I want a little bit of excess space around the stamp rather than going right to the edge. Not too much, but just enough so I can create myself some tabs for which to stick this down with 
So just making sure my frame is perfectly clear there, and that is, so I can clean this stamp up and put this one away. So I'm going to leave those to dry, put those aside. I'm actually going to work on the front of my uh, card now, or my book. Now, this is the reason that I've not already started gluing everything inside, because I wanted this to be flat. So I'm going to put this inside my stamping platform. And for this, I'm going to be heat embossing. So I'm going to use my anti-static bag all over just to make sure that that stays clear. In fact, it doesn't matter whether this is the back or the front. So I can actually put this, use this as the front the right way up. And this is a symmetrical image as well. So there we go. So place that on there. And I'm going to apply an embossing ink. So mine's my Versafine. And then I'm going to heat this with a gold embossing powder on the top. There we go. How fantastic does that stamp look when it's heat embossed in gold on the deep red? It's just gorgeous, isn't it? So now I can construct the center of my card. I will do some more to the front, but I just wanted to get that kind of that stamping done first while it was all flat. So coming back to my stamped images from earlier, I'm going to cut this complete image out here. I mean, I might even cover over the center with something else and put a written message in there. I'm not sure yet, it doesn't matter. I will construct the book and then I'll decide later what I'm going to do with my sentiment. If you want to mask off, so that you don't actually stamp the crystal board that's easy to do on the stamp and then that way you've got an area for a sentiment to be written but i would suggest if you're going to write a sentiment and give this as a gift um maybe write your sentiment before you do this part so that's going to go there but these are going to go around the edge so as i showed you the setup with those i'm going to actually glue them rather than gluing them onto the base at the moment i'm going to first of all glue them onto the back of this sort of tarot card here. Now during this process I've actually decided, I've changed my mind a little bit about what's going to happen here and I actually want to make this into a bit of a shaker card. Um, so I'm going to have some sparkles shaking, shaking about inside there. That does mean that I need these corners to be completely closed rather than open as they are now. Now the corners are going to be hidden thankfully, that's um, a good thing, um, because the frame here is going to cover those over. So I'm actually just going to use a bit of plain tape and I'm just going to run a bit of tape around the inside of each of these corners just to make sure that they are sealed before I do the next stage. So with my frame, what I've done is I've scored around the very edge and I've actually cut it with just under a centimetre their excess as tabs. I've cut two little slots in the top and bottom here on one side and the same at the bottom. So hopefully you can see those. Um, I can fold these over, but I'm not going to do that just yet because I need to now cut the frame out. It's easier to do all of those workings whilst the inside is still there because you've then got stability. There we go. So I've cut that away and I'm left with this really pretty frame now. The more I get into this project, the more ideas I have. Um, I usually start with an idea and then I start filming it and then I decide what I'm going to do. Do you know what? As well as the shaker, I might even be adding lights into this. That's going to be so much fun. Um, I'll see how we get on because before I enclose this, I want to make sure that I've got everything in there I need. And I think the lights would be so cool. I've got little LEDs that would probably work, hopefully. Um, but this is essentially going to all fold down. Now I've left tabs on the side so that I can fold this down. I've got to be careful because there's a really thin area here. I'm going to add a piece of acetate underneath this. So um, I'm going to do that in just a moment before I glue this together, but I just want to show you essentially how this is going to go. So just gently fold those thin areas. So each of the tabs will fold over and they will stick to the other side. So obviously some are longer than others, but they will stick to there. And then that is going to sit uh, probably just on the, I think I'll do it on the inside of the red there. So you can see, so that will sit like so. So that'll go around almost two times. So I think I'm happy with that. I'll leave that uh, length at the moment as it is. I'm going to use hot glue to adhere these and I'm going to just use my pokey tool in the bottom here, bottom corner here, just to pop the hole through from the back. 
and through to the back of the card there so hopefully you can see that that's that I'm going to feed my lights through so now I need to think about positioning this onto the base of the card on the inside there we go and then I'll pop a hole through there too there we go so my battery pack will sit on the back I will now feed my lights through so if I take the end pop the lights through and start securing these in so I'll pull them all through and I'll just hot glue them around the edge of the inside of the frame here. So I've glued my lights all around the inside edge. I've not worried about them looking neat and tidy because it's all going to be covered over. And on the back, I've glued the battery pack peeking through that hole that we made. So if I turn those on, you've got the lights in there. Now, as I said, I've got my frame and the frame is going to go over the top. Let's just turn those off for now. Um, now I'm going to glue along the inside edge of the frame, put the acetate in, and then I'm going to adhere that on the inside of this burgundy coloured frame that I've created. So it's going to go something like so on the inside, glued in there. But before I do that, I'm going to put my sprinkles in. So these are just some little gold and silver stars. So I think they'll be perfect. So I'm going to put quite a few in. I rarely use these because they're so tiny. Um, but I think that would just be really a really fun addition. Now for some additional embellishments on the inside, I'm going to stamp this gorgeous cat and probably the uh, moon as well and just keep to sort of Halloween sort of um, theme. And I'm going to place those on the front of the acetate there. And then I'm also going to stamp the word or cut out the word believe and put that on the front as a title. So I feel like this would benefit from having a ribbon wrapped around it, but I don't want the black ribbon to cover up the gorgeous detail on the front. So what I'm going to do is take my craft knife, I'm getting quite messy around here now, um, and through the centre I'm going to cut two slots. So I'm going to cut one just here, I'm going to go right through that, and then I'm going to do the same on this side as well, so that the ribbon can kind of duck down under the beautiful design and then back over the top and wrap round. So there's the finished spell book. I would definitely be putting a note on the back that's got your message on but also explaining to turn the lights on before you open it up um, or maybe hint towards turn on the switch before opening so they don't know it's lights. So it opens up like so, so it's just a ribbon that you can untie, it can be a knot or it can be a bow. And then inside you have your absolutely beautiful centerpiece in there. Again, if you want to mask this area off, uh, rather than having the crystal ball, you could have a message written in there or you could have a stamped message, whatever it may be. But don't those lights really make that those shaker elements shimmer so much just like magic i love that i'm so pleased i went with the shaker and the lights as well it was just going to be the plain stamped icons so there we go everything i've used is linked down below and you have 20 percent off of any of the items that i've used also again all the details down below in the description and in the description you'll also find where to hop along to the next person and how to get to the beginning of the hop on the craft stash channel